Hey, 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 family, it's your girl, honey, and I got my bro bro with me today. I got Mr. Bowtie from the Rhinos. What's up, bro? How you doing? Hey, I'm great, I'm great. Welcome to From the Real. Thank you for having me. Okay, and I appreciate you stepping in. Much prayers go out to JR, praying all is well. We'll see you next week on the show. So we are going to continue our series today on Dating 101, and we're also going to talk to... Mr. Bernard Moore about the UMA's coming. That's the Worldwide Underground Music Awards coming November 17th in Atlanta, Georgia. You don't want to miss it. Infusion Team will be there. You will have Boss Lady there. You will have so many other radio stations there, but most importantly, you will be there. Because that's right, Infusion Team will be streaming live. So with that being said, let's talk about dating. This is, I believe, the sixth <laughs> Excuse my bro. <laughs> this <laughs> is the six series on it's it's an eight part, but this is part six. And this is about compromise. Well, I'm sorry, five, you know. <laughs> it's the fifth series. Excuse me for being wrong on that. But this is about compromise. Because sometimes when you're dating you get a little overzealous and you have to learn how to compromise. Things don't always go your way, right? True. So What's your thought on that when it comes to dating and compromise, bro? Compromise. Compromise. That's a hard one. <laughs> it depends on how long you've been in a situation with someone to compromise. I mean, like, like just starting out dating? No, no. Not, I mean, of like, course not just starting off. Come on. Like, how long? Say you're dating for six months and you're, you see that there's something that you can probably invest in. This is something that... You can invest in. It depends on the topic. Compromising <laughs> on what? Okay. All right. Let's say we have plans. You have you and your girl had plans, yeah. right? You have plans to go out on, say, a Saturday on a weekend, but something came up, and unfortunately, you know, this happens to happen all the time, or what have you. But. Um, you communicate with her. You yeah. let her know that things are going on. Yep. Yeah. But she feels that um, she don't want to compromise and be understanding in that form of like understanding what you're going through. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. How do you handle that? The best thing in, in that would probably say the time that you couldn't spend, you got to take out that time week or something and. Make it impactful for the not think you're not there or you're not involved in a relationship. But I, I want to say that's compromise. That's just being aware of your your partner. Not com yeah, compromise is like Go ahead. two different religions. <laughs> Which one are you going to celebrate? Okay, so if that's what, what we're saying, maybe <laughs> to, I would say religious because. Me, I believe you have to be like, exactly, you know, equally yoked. So with me, I, don't I met think... a, I met a couple of two different religions, and they seem to work better than people that had the same similar. Are you serious? Yeah, it well, was interesting. What, was it? what were their religions? He was Muslim. She was Christian. I, I excuse me. Y'all know I put my business out there. I was married to a Muslim. Yeah. And that didn't work. I'm not saying it did. I, no, no, I was no, shocked. No, no. How did that work? How, how I mean, how was he? Was he was he was not. That extremist type Muslim like cover. Clearly, he loved her. Mm -hmm. That he didn't worry about her religion. And he was more passive. Like I've never, like I was, I converted to Islam. So I grew up Christian. Okay. Left for everything, then became Muslim. So I understand what you're saying. Like most Muslims are controlling, and then when they become it, they become even more. Like more to the extreme. To the extreme. But he was, he was mellow. He was laid back. Like he, he inspired me because I didn't think it was possible. Because hmm. my first wife, she was um, Christian, and then she converted. Then she left, and then she became a Buddhist. So compromise. That's compromise. That's oh wow. So she, Christmas in the house and stuff like that. But and you were a Muslim at yeah, this I was time. Muslim. So how long have you been a Muslim? My son, my oldest son is twenty five. So about. 21 years? Completely off subject, but what <laughs> made you convert? Convert? 
<laughs> That's, um, well, my grandma used to take us to, uh, what is it? She was a Protestant. And I read the Bible. The funny thing is the, the one book she had was a Jehovah Witness book with the cartoons. And that, I don't know. I just got interested. I read it, went to church, but then nothing panned out to what the Bible said. Mm -hmm. Everything was about money or things that were not, nothing in the Bible. So for me growing up in New York, everything was about money. And you got a pastor with a bins in the projects. Right. That didn't add up for me. So by then, I was done. I was good. I was just trying to get money. And I wasn't following no religion. I, I didn't think nothing of it. And then, but I always, Malcolm X was, El Hajj Malik Shabazz was someone, and I always read his stuff and, right. and all that. And I read Nation of Islam. But I never wanted to convert. But that was probably part that led me into it. My father was a Muslim, a Sunni Muslim. And he lived here in Highland Park. He was a teacher at one of the masjids. And he had me come down. I converted. <clears throat> and that's how I became Muslim. But okay. finding out everything's the same. You got bad Christians, you got bad Muslims. So for me, it was just, I just fell back. So that was a compromise. That, in my relationships, that is a compromise. That was a compromise. That's a compromise. It seemed like that because I really didn't think that that, being that I married a Muslim and it didn't work out, I didn't think that it was possible. But hearing that, you know. But he was different. He, he was different. He was, he was, he was different. Humble. Yeah, you know, he was different. He was there. And he was, for me, I, like, I try to study Buddhism. I would say he was like that, like a monk. Like, he was really? just past. Not to say he was soft or anything, he was just not. What you see, the, the stereotype, especially for a black man, and she was straight in the church, but I've never seen them have an issue, never heard them have an issue. And he helped me <laughs> when I was married, because that was, his wife was my first wife's um, aunt. So me and him talked, and he calmed me down. Like he, he <laughs> if anything, my father was the opposite. Like, oh, you should divorce her, da da da, or get another wife. And that was, and that's what, unfortunately, most African American men that convert, they go straight there, which I don't understand. What do you mean they go straight there? Oppressive. <laughs> you want to oppress people, but you want to oppress your wife. Right, right. We are waiting for Bernard Moore to chime in. Is he ready? Okay. Hey, Bernard. One second, family. We're trying to get Bernard more connected with us. We're going to talk about the UMAs. Super excited. October, not October. Now, y'all know I'm crazy. November 17th <laughs> in Atlanta. UMAs. So we are just waiting for the connection. What's up, B more? What's up? How's everybody doing? What's going on? Well, hello, hello, hello. What's up, Dimor? How's everybody doing? What's going on? Well, hello, hello. Say what? You know, we're blessed. We're blessed. Okay. Can you hear me? All right. Did it stop? All right. I am glad that you joined me. I'm sorry I had to put the earpiece in. I can hear you now. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. So how's okay, everybody doing today? Me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, so what's... We good. We're good. We're, good. Yeah. We're ready to talk yeah, about the it. UMAs. Talk to me now. What's the update? But it looked like you're going in slow motion. <laughs> That's better. Is it better now? Is the connection better? 
I can see. I can see you. I see you talking. Okay. Is the connection better? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Well, I can hear you perfectly clear. So let's go ahead and get this going. Let's talk about the UMAs, why I got you going, why we got this connection good. Okay. There's uh, some new stuff that's updated. Um, we got some um, more tickets for sale. We got even some of the core DJ retreat from the core day DJ retreat. Some of the DJs gonna be coming to our event also. Um, you still can get some tickets. There's still some left. Uh, we got um, Chico El Debar's son that's gonna be performing live with us also. Um, his his um, entertainment group is gonna be in there. Uh, if I'm not sure, if I'm correct, I think she's um, planning on bringing Avant there to show us some love also. So um, we, uh, everything is going good for the UMA's Awards, for everybody to come down and enjoy themselves. You know, um, it's going to be a fantastic show. Um, for, for all the artists that's involved, um, it's going to be a great, uh, um, how can I say, a presentation for all the artists and entertainers that's going to be there. Um, it's going to be something way different and very great for all the artists that's going to be there also. So um, looking forward to all the radio stations on the red carpet um, for them to uh, do their job, their job um, and, and, and doing all the interviews with all the artists that's going to be there. Also, uh, we're going to have a drone. We're going to be Facebook Live through the whole show with a drone sitting up over us recording the whole show. Um, so I don't know. We probably wind up sh shutting down. I think I lost you. You did lose him. Okay, family. I'm here having technical difficulties. And uh, be more, if you can come back, please shine back in. As you heard him say, there are big things coming with the UMAs. El Jabarge, uh, Chico Debar's son. We have a few performances coming in. So, hey, make sure you get your ticket. You can also go on Be More Magazine's page, or you can go to Infusion's podcast page and we have the information where you can get your tickets. The tickets are $25 and $50 for VIP. You don't want to miss it. Make sure you are in the house. If you're not in the house, make sure you are logged on to Facebook. Not only to Facebook, but also Infusions Podcast because we'll be streaming live as well. And you can also watch us as well as listen to us on InfusionsPodcast.com. Remember that this show as well as <laughs> this show was brought to you by Infusions by Honey, home of the Hennessy Pistachio Vanilla Kush Cake. Make sure you stay infused. Okay. All right, we're back. We're back. We're going to come back. All right, come on, Mr. B. Moore. We're ready for you. Let's go. Well, hello, hello. Hold on. You got to wait for him to connect. Keep talking to him. got to love that technology. You ready, B? You ready to go? <laughs> I'm connected. It's cute. Right. It's cute. Right. I'm, I'm back. That. You know technology. It's raining here in Detroit, so. Yeah, because it keeps freezing up on me. It's freezing up. Yeah, it's raining here, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get the information that I just uh, mentioned to you? Um, I didn't get it just yet, but I'll get it after we finish the show. Okay, uh, the information for uh, Chico L. DeBarge's son, Christian, Christian DeBarge, is going to be performing. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a uh, um, live drone. We're going to be Facebook Live through the whole thing uh, with a drone sitting up over the show, watching the whole show. Okay. Um, yeah, we got more people coming in from other places to show love from Alabama, uh, Tennessee, and everywhere else. Um, I think it's going to be a marvelous turnout. It's going to be fabulous for all the artists that's going to be there. So I think it's going to be something really big that we can hopefully promote and um, share with uh, BET to show them so we can hopefully get that signature that we can call the BET Underground Music Award show one day soon. So that's what that's the label I'm reaching for, the uh, oh BET God. label. And that was the BET label, right? That's what we're reaching yeah. for. Yeah, that's what I'm reaching for. Yeah, that's what we're reaching for that right there <laughs> That's yeah so um, so but other than that everything else is great um you got i plan on sending you a sample of uh christian song 
and his EPK, so you can read a little bit more about him before you get there. Um, um, all the radio stations, I'm, I'm submitting his song to all of you guys, so you guys get a little more familiar uh, what's going on with him and and um, how long he's been um, rapping and singing. Um, and I think his father is going to be there. Chico DeBarge is going to come in and probably show some love also. So it's going to um, be real nice for a lot of mainstream people. I, I think are very interested in what we got going on right now. So I think yeah. it's going to That's what you were telling me about the mainstream artists. Because, you know, today's artists, usually they have started off as independent artists. So they have a love and respect for what you're doing. So I think I lost you again. But we're going to keep going, huh? And make sure you keep Infuse. Stay in tune with Infusion Podcast for your latest updates for the UMAs with Bernard Moore. So we're going to keep our talk with conversation going with Bowtie about relationship and compromising. So I had it wrong, you know, maybe I had it compromising, um, mixed up with something else, but yet you learn something new every day. With that being said, I appreciate that lesson, bro, bro. <laughs> You know, I wanted to touch on something that is really not getting a lot of media, and that is the shooting in Kentucky. Um, like, even with the riot up, people were like, I didn't know anything about that. And I've had a few conversations with a few other people today, whereas um, a gentleman came in and he actually went into a Kroger's and he shot two elderly African people um but the that's not the kicker the kicker is that he first went to a church he tried to go to a church first in jefferson town um it blows me away that people can have so much hatred in their heart and when they arrested him he said white people don't kill white people white people don't shoot white people let me correct that so it is, let me just throw that because you haven't seen it, but it amazes me how people can let hate gear them into doing something that tears their lives completely up. Here at Infusions, we believe that we are our brothers and sisters keepers, and we believe in giving a hand up, not a hand out. So when something like this happens, it's really disheartening. And we just want people to go ahead and love a little harder, hug a little longer, and just embrace what your purpose is because this right here was unnecessary. It was completely full of hate. And um, the world is just so full of that now. We just need more. What you think? We need something different. <laughs> we got to do something different. Something got to happen. No, you're right. Something needs to happen. I don't know. Yeah, because, I mean. This is, this is America. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. But does that get you upset? I mean, does it like, or is it so common that you be like, uh. Oh. Unfortunately, it's too common for me. I'm 49. <clears throat> the last time I went to a protest was for Anthony Bias in New York, where the cops choked him out because a football mm -hmm. hit, the, hit the patrol car. And I went to the court to support. They had snipers on the building because <clears throat> they was worried that the people react the way, for me, they should react. This is from Emmett Till, and past Emmett Till's the same scenario. Absolutely. It's the same scenario, so for me, yeah. Unfortunately, the news story is always the same. It is, it is. And uh, you know what, I'm glad that you brought up Emmett Till, because um, we were, I was talking to a friend of mine, and we talked about the, um, Bill Cosby case mm -hmm. and how how many years passed and he yeah. was prosecuted Treated. for that. Yeah. But the the lady who lied, blatantly lied. She's not getting prosecuted. Nothing. <clears throat> but that's America. I mean, that's the format. I mean, no one was that rap song. Was it America's a joke or something like that? What was that song? Uh, On not nine one one's a joke. But what was that other song? It was oh god, it was old school. Oh God, was it by KRS-One? I... Oh, I can't even think of it. God! Yeah, but see, 
But see, right there, what you just said, mostly, there's nothing equivalent to that in music, to a public enemy, a KRS one, no. where there was a message and there was putting information out so people, people have this on the internet now and it don't, I don't know, for me it doesn't seem to phase people. Not the way it used to back when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I like agree. you said, the music, name a song, that's what coming to 911 is a joke or the message, the message is not. What is that song? Oh, My Philosophy. Okay, that whole and album. Man, man. Yeah, but he wasn't, they were scared of him. The funny thing is, you look at the music industry, everything they were scared of, they, they squash, but they put up something that's destructive. Right, right. Like, hip hop was recent, yeah. Bad and Which is, is not fine. a lifestyle. It's we, not a lifestyle. It's not. <laughs> but in hip hop, you had 360. Mm -hmm. You had a Will Smith. You had a Rakim. You had a KRS One. You had comical, ratchet, but it wasn't one focus. Now it's one slice of the it pie. It is. It is. So stuff like this is like, I don't know. I really don't know. People talk to me and it's like, it's hard for me. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard. Like, I used to argue with the cops. If you talk to my friends, they were scared of me talking back to the cops, but you were in the wrong. Right. Now I don't, because I don't know what's going to happen. And that's sad. That's sad. But I'm living in America, and there's no... There's, this is our America. Yeah. Welcome to our America. Yeah, but then they, you got the FBI investigating, WNCAA, um, football, um, steroids and um, basketball, but you got police officers that's straight murdering people. Yeah. And there's no, there's nothing. There's no reaction. There's nothing. No one's following up on Malcolm X taking it to the world court. Until they take it to the world court, none of this means nothing. This court system isn't going to worry about us. Now what's the world court? To the UN. Okay. He was trying to take them, he was putting a petition or whatever to the world court to judge them on their um, human rights. The treatments of African Americans. Americans. And, then, and that needs to be, t you know what? But no one's picked it up but, since he got murdered. But you know what's unfortunate? We need to start treating each other better. That's a, that's a whole nother, that's know, another that's another I mean, But see, that's what they respect, use though. If yeah, we I want know. respect, how the hell are we gonna get it if we can't respect each other? Yeah, but you got a history of psychological warfare. Amen, I get that. When PTSD first came out and I read it, that's African Americans. Mm -hmm. That is slavery. Yes. That is everything in there. We did not get help. And we're still not getting help. And we're still not getting help and we're not gonna get help. So you got that. So yeah, of course we're gonna kill each other. Yeah, yeah. We're conditioned to kill each other. I don't know, this is, this, I don't know. I'm, I'm waiting American? for someone to give an answer. I, I'm curious. I, like you just said, we have in-house problems and we definitely have a country, this country and their problems. I wish I knew. What I've been seeing now in, in politics is that the millennials have started to step up because they see I, what, actually my nephew, shout out to Johnny uh, Dancy, he's actually running for trustee in Madison, Illinois and he's 24. 25 because they want to stand up for change they see the problems and it's not about Republican you know Democrats Democrat. it's not about that it's about actually fixing the issues <laughs> instead of passing it around no, you're right. you know so what's your thoughts on that have you noticed that as well the children stepping up somewhat but I understand what you're saying I can see that I remember when my son first came to me about Obama mm -hmm. I didn't believe it, I, and he was just so gun ho but I didn't want to push nothing on him that I experienced. I, last time I voted was for the mayor of New York, Mayor Dinkins, the first black mayor. I didn't see nothing. I didn't see nothing that I could sit there and say, I'm safer in the street. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's no, no gun violence in my projects. And I've never seen no politician. Now I'm hoping, like you just said, I've been seeing younger people, but I don't know. You're talking about the country that's, this is going on and like you said, no one's prosecuting. It's not to the fullest. And cops, the first indictment or first prosecution or the first cop in how many years, like people are saying that's a victory. 
I'm sorry. That's so not many, a victory. So many go go unnoticed that they sweep no, up under the yeah, yeah. rug. Yeah, yeah, that's another thing, yeah. But if this is the country, this is law enforcement. Welcome to America. This is law enforcement. Mm -hmm. This is law enforcement. But when that, co that, that gentleman down in Texas shot up the cops, it was a problem. What was this? What was that? It was, they tried to connect them with um, Black Lives Matter, and he shot up the cops. What? And yeah. But I forget that that situation reminded me of that part in that movie um, with Denzel Washington with the speakers, the debate was it debaters? The great debate. The great debate. Mm -hmm. That the last quote he had the gentleman at the end where he's basically saying, "Me passively protesting or violently protesting? Which one would you pick?" For this country to go on for this many years and doesn't think this is a problem. That's why it is a Black Lives Matter. Absolutely. These things just don't pop up. They want to say there's a conspiracy. I don't know all about that, but there's an issue that hasn't been taken care of. There's a reason why there's an NAACP or these other organizations to help protect black folks or these other organizations for other people to protect them. You, you have problems. You're yeah. not fixing yeah. these problems, and these problems are not going to go away. And like you said, there's a new generation. Mm -hmm. I think this generation is fed up because they saw they're radical, and they're not afraid to step up, whereas our generation, you hear that, we were scared. This generation right here, they're not scared. No, you're right about that. They're not. You. They wasn't around when Malcolm Martin, right. Mega Elvis, where if you stood up, you was murdered. Right. Now you could be murdered and you're not standing up. So if anything, then that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's good. Unfortunately, it's sad. It took, yeah, yeah. it's 2018. And we still, in some form, I still back, it's like it's 1960 in some forms. Yeah, with if, the Megan, was it Megan Kelly? with the blackface thing. Like, I don't even know how that's a conversation. Just, they get rid of Rosie and Barr, but this is a conversation. I mean. But this is America. You know, all I keep hearing, I promise you, is that song. <laughs> Welcome to America. No, he that's killed, he is killed that it with that. Goes? This is America. Yeah, this is America. No, he, he nailed it. That this is America. But the funny part is seeing other nations see this is America with the wall. This, is, this has been going on. The wall ain't nothing. Figure out why neighborhoods are segregated and there's no wall. Yeah. Why you can sit here and talk about all this, there's lead and water. How's that even a conversation? And there's still lead and water. And now they're finding more lead. And it's like, oh, they got a program talking about clean water. What are y'all talking about? No. I, I know personally people that are still in Flint, Michigan, and still dealing with the, the contaminated water. They have young lady. I know a young lady who had. Um, vaginal cancer from that, developed that, wow. from taking baths and all of that. Mm -hmm. And what compensation are they getting? None. Yeah, that's... It's that paper shuffling again, you know, the numbers and all this and that point, it's your fault, it's your fault. Damn who fault it is, let's fix the problem. But see, and that was the part that Malcolm was doing and what the civil rights did. They put America's dirt in front of the camera that now everyone sees this so-called first world doing to their citizens. Until people take it out of the country and put it in the world and try to get that movement. I mean, like, like you were just talking about Bill Cosby. For this man to get convicted years later, mm -hmm. then these crimes that's being committed still, and no one's talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, hopefully this millennial won't repeat the mistakes. Yeah, passion. I got hope in them. I have hope in them. I definitely have hope in them. Family, look, we appreciate you be tuning in to us, and we hope that you tune in next week. And Jr. will be in the building, so make sure you tune in to Infusions Podcast dot com. You have joined myself, honey, with my special co-host, my bro, bro, Rhino's horns up bow tie. And I appreciate him, you know, joining us. Make sure, again, I cannot stress enough, 
November 17th, UMAs. Get your tickets. You can purchase T-shirts on our um, page. We have outfits that are on sale, true religions and things of that nature, MGM bags that are being sold to support the UMAs. So make sure you tune in. And always. Remember to call 844-420-4687 if you want to place an order for infusions by Honey, or you can call 313-978-3087. We're always open. Remember to always stay infused. Have a wonderfully blessed day. Peace.